how to define Rett syndrome. I, I've heard people say it's like a combination of autism, cerebral palsy, um, Tourette's, um, muscular dystrophy, ALS, kind of all rolled into one. And actually what I liken it to is somebody who has full capacity to understand language and has independent thinking and, and independent language um, in their heads. It's all in there, um, but they're trapped in their own bodies. The brain is screaming out that they want to say the words, but the pathways to the mouth or to the other muscles are just not working. With the apraxia in Rett syndrome, which I think is its cornerstone, it means I can tell my body to do something and it won't start doing it, or I can tell my body to go right and instead it's going to go left, or I can have my hands already going, 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 but I can't get them to stop. Our children are very much more capable cognitively than they were given credit for at first. Allowing possibilities. People that are using AAC could achieve what their peers can achieve. It's just about finding the right way for them to do that. So by presuming competence, I put the full onus, the full responsibility of educating this child or helping this adult on me. Finding a way for the person to communicate without having to use their hands or their mouth is key and that's where eye gaze and using the eyes is the most important thing. Modelling a language is so important because if you don't model a language then you can't expect someone to learn to speak a language. Don't look at all the things they cannot do because there's a whole bundle of things that they can do. You're showing them, you're demonstrating, and you're giving them an opportunity to respond every time. So you're showing them how to put the language together. What we always have to be asking ourselves is, can I make it easier for this person to do what everybody else is doing? 